Hey everybody, it's Zinny here with another episode of the Chaotic Podcast. Today, my special co-host, I got Mr. Smacky Down and Haunted Yawn. Hello. Most basic of names ever. Shut up. <laughs> she literally she literally clicked like the randomized thing and then just added 017 at the end of it. It's not true. It used to be Haunt or Hunted Yawn. Hunted yawn. So you added a U. My bad. Or no, or, you added an A. Yeah, you freaking retard. <laughs> um, so guess what our uh, stuff's on today? I guess you guys already know, but we are going to be talking about cancel culture. Woo! Ooh. Ooh probably get canceled for talking about it probably so, yeah we will have knight joining us here in a minute as well but i just wanted to start it up a while so how's everybody's day going pretty good tired yeah i feel that i took a nap and ended up more tired it, it, it was a day and the it, it existed it was a day yeah Oh, all right. So first thing I want to do, explain the Urban Dictionary definition of being canceled. It defines cancel as dismissed something or somebody or to reject an individual or an idea. So. And it's Urban Dictionary, so you have to believe it. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way it works, right? For sure. All right. So, Kayla, I know you said you did a lot of uh, research on this. I sure tried. You sure tried. Do you want to start off? With my opinions. Trying is better than not trying. <laughs> I got I got a few questions myself that we can go off of, but I well, didn't I know have, if you... I don't have questions. I just mainly have, like, things to go along with people's statements. Yeah. Um. So, my... The main thing people seem to get canceled over now are things that they either said like far back in their past or things that they are like getting blamed for that they might or might not have done, but nobody has actual solid proof to it. So do you guys believe that cancel culture is like helpful in any ways? Because they do certain times when you do find out someone's like a pedophile or you know, or they did like really bad shit or are racist, like they will get canceled for it and nobody will view their stuff. And they basically have to go in hiding and reinvent their whole career. But is it really helpful? I don't think I it's feel... oh, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, I feel like if you didn't catch it when it happened, then at that point, it feel, it, I feel like it's you're you're kind of late to it. And at that point, whoever had their career already set up and they could be uh, basically in the best time of their career. And then they're like, oh, wait, this happened like 10 years ago or da, 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 this happened several years ago. And now we're just going to fuck up your whole entire life now because well, that, of something you said or did years ago. Thing. People can literally go on Twitter and if you've had your Twitter for, like, as long as I have, like, all you have to go to is my Twitter and then, like, s- search, like, a certain word. Like, you could write, like, you could look up if I said the N-word or something like that at any point in my life on Twitter, and it'll show it. And it, even if it's, like, 20 years ago, people will still, like, try and cancel you for it. Like, Well, it's, like, the main thing. People, obviously, people growing up have made mistakes. No one's perfect at what they do, but these people are so insecure behind their screens and trying to mess up other people's lives that they try and find things that are wrong with that person so they can go on and maybe have something interesting to talk about in their life. And in reality, it's just bringing like a influencer and their whole like fan base down. Well, yeah, let's just say what it is. 
it's a bunch of 12 year old through 16 year old people who think the world revolves around them and as soon as someone does something that they don't like not realizing the world was a complete different place when we were growing up and when other people or influences were growing up like it's completely different now shit that you say now or shit you say back then was is never going to be okay like today which it probably never should have been then but we also didn't take it a different era then though like shane dawson and the whole Jaden or what's her name Jaden, right Jada. that whole thing was hilarious whenever i was a teenager i would laugh at that shit like that was the kind of humor that you could have but nowadays you can't have any type of humor you can't say one wrong thing if uh, like you're done you say something wrong and you're done. You're over. Basically, your life, your career is over. But the thing is, cancel culture doesn't work if you actually just don't care, which we see in the Tony Lopez situation where he's and he's talking to underage girls all the time, but he just but- ignores everything and he's just, you know, it is what it is. That's what people come down to. But what went down with that case is he should have went to jail no matter what. Oh, no, definitely. But what I'm saying is does. Like, is it even helpful? Like, because you can cancel someone, but if they don't respond to it or anything like that, then well, what are you going to do? You're still behind a screen at the end of the day. Like, It also doesn't help that most of the people that are getting canceled have, like, millions of followers that are under 14. So these followers, they don't understand that the manipulation in, like, everything. And they're like oh, well, he might have had sexual relations with a 13-year-old, but what's it matter? He's just our age. Like, we think this guy is hot, so what? We don't know. Like, There was this YouTuber that I watched back in the day. His name is On J Station. He used to do, like, 24-hour videos and stuff like that, but he moved his channel completely different. And one of his uh, videos was... um, I, Well, first off, he would capitalize on, like, rappers' deaths. So, like, he would do these 3 a.m. challenges, and when X died or something like that, he's like, XXX Tentacion called my phone at 3 a.m., and you'll never guess what he said. And then he does, like, this stupid recording thing, which a lot of us, a lot of people that are, like, fans of X were, like, completely pissed and thought it was completely unnecessary and everything like that. And yeah. then eventually it got to the point where he kept doing these things and to the point where he made a video that I bought a slave on the dark web. And everyone's like, no, dude, that's fucked up. Like, that's not cool at all. And But his younger fans are, like, cheering it on and this and that. And they're like, oh, my God, I can't wait till the next video. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I hope I wasn't that naive as a child. But... Yeah. Yeah. He's Hello, now man. off the internet. Hey, night. It's nice to see you in here, buddy. <laughs> but, yeah. That, I wouldn't say it's necessarily helpful because it just it doesn't work if you're popular or attractive and the people that it does work to like the most that it does is it ruins a lot of people's brand deals. Yeah. At least that's what I noticed. Like so, David Kubrick when he got canceled for, for apparently even though it wasn't him and nobody could provide proof to it that he was uh given the girls, the underage girls, alcohol, even though I'm not even sure if David was 21 at the time either, because I'm pretty sure David's my age, and those videos are like four or five years old. So uh, David got canceled for the whole situation, what he wasn't even involved in. So yeah. that, that's just what I'm saying. Like, he lost all of his sponsorships, and he was wrongfully, basically, I would say he was wrongfully, you know, accused of doing things he wasn't doing. Okay, so here's a question. What? Uh, do you think a lot of it is pick and choose? Oh, definitely. Most certainly. Yeah, it's most definitely pick yeah. and choose. Yeah, it's definitely pick and choose. Oh, it's for and sure. It's, and it's more with men than it is female. Oh, for sure. No doubt about it. But, uh... Like, well, I'm, what I've noticed is, for, I guess as far as for females, it's mostly Twitch streamers that kind of get that cancel culture on there. Yeah. Uh, 
but they also spread it too. Like I forget who it was tried to get. It wasn't Pokey. It was another like high end Twitch streamer that just shows their tits a lot. And PewDiePie <laughs> made like a a comment about her. And then when she was on stream, she's like, "Oh my god!" Like everyone go over there and comment this stuff. Like she was encouraging cancel culture towards them. Toxic. Yeah. What about you, Kayla? You're the one asked the question. What do you think? Oh, I said I do think it's a lot of pick and choose. I think girls are a lot better off with cancel culture because, like, girls, you see the emotion out of them, and then people are like, oh, my gosh, she didn't actually mean it. Look at her, blah, blah, blah. And then guys, people are like, well fuck the guys don't have feelings and if they did something wrong they did something wrong no matter how old they were or whatever yeah when you're a guy stuff just doesn't die does it no never it'll it always comes back up guys have it even like in general with living guys have it worse than girls do like i'm gonna bring up a situation that about sienna sexually assaulting jack Uh, i also even though I truly believe she didn't do it because she made that huge ass YouTube video uh, defending herself in every situation and Jack hasn't said one word on it and which is honestly it is what it is but I think it's if it is false then Jack's not saying anything about it that's bullshit but like that's the thing though people nowadays will be like oh my gosh keep all your shit off the internet we don't need to know this you guys should have handled it offline but as soon as someone does not speak up about something they're like oh well we need to know you guys brought it on the internet this needs to happen this needs to happen and well, it's again it's pick or choose do you want it on the internet or don't you because either way you're gonna well, get fucked over yeah Her, she still gets hate comments a lot but i see them slowly dying down over time which i'm usually one that like if i'm in the comments or whatever and someone is like she did this this and this i just like I, i'll comment on it like just proof i'm not gonna cancel someone be- if i have no proof on the situation but i do see how that would be different if it's like the guy's point of view like if it was jack that got accused I, of it yeah, i was gonna say if it was jack that acute that was being accused of sexual assault towards it, CF, wouldn't, it jack- wouldn't have got it wouldn't have died down as much as it has already. Jack would not even be on the internet right now. Yeah. Wait, who are we talking about? Sienna C- May oh. and Jack uh, Wright. They're like big uh, TikTok stars. There, there was oh, a story okay. about a month or two ago that she sexually assaulted him while he was sleeping or something like that. And there was this video that went was- viral. It was Jack's friend who like leaked all this shit. So it wasn't even Jack himself that came out and said this. It was this Twitter that, like, isn't even verified or anything like that. It's just his friend who, like, let all this information out. When uh, it, was, it was someone else that sexually assaulted him, but they played it off as Sienna. Yeah. Oh, okay. But when they blamed her for it, they showed this video of him apparently is sleeping or something like that, but it, it looks like he is still moving in the video. Like, it's just hard to tell because it's he looks like he's moving. His his hands are definitely moving in the video. Like, you just can't see his face, so you don't know if he's sleeping or not. But, you know. But there's a lot to it. And if you haven't seen I'd suggest go watching Sienna's video. But if it was the other way around, I don't think Jack would be on the internet. So it does show favoritism towards women in situations. Well, that's like going back to the whole Tony Lopez thing. Tony Lopez was accused of was it sexual sexual relations with a minor yes and then multiple multiple dying, minors everyone started dying down and then all of a sudden his freaking brother comes out and a video comes out about that about tony lopez's brother andre was also having sexual relations with allegedly minors. everything's allegedly since you know it can't be proved I don't give a shit. They're both pervs and they need to be in jail. True. It's also, um, I want to really call it cancel culture, but like the whole ordeal with uh, Johnny Depp and what's her face. Okay. About him getting abused or Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's cancel culture. Yeah, they canceled Johnny Depp. Whenever yeah, it wasn't trying, even They him. were trying to cancel him. Yeah. But, you know, 
fans no, like me didn't believe that, you know, I didn't no, believe. He lost, he he lost his contract with, um, who was it? Disney? Disney. He, he lost some movie contracts. Yeah. But he gained some, too, in the process, so. Yeah. But Amber Heard hasn't lost anything, and it, it came out that she was the one abusing him. Like, and she should I be think it was, like, last stuff. week. It was, like, last week that it came out that she actually did abuse Johnny Depp. Yeah. Like, they came out with proof of it, but she hasn't been but, removed from anything. Yeah, I was about to say, she's still, even though they casted somebody else to play uh, Aquaman's wife for the new movie, they still are keeping her as the role even after she was proven guilty. Yeah. Which, so that's just showing, like, they didn't really, it, it, it worked that they finally got the evidence and everything and proved her that she was guilty, but yet here she is still having all her roles and everything. Well, that's what I mean. The, like, girls have it better because a guy would come out that his girlfriend was abusing him, and if he, he falsely accused her, he would go to jail. Yeah, but see, this the problem is, is that it's been going on since before cancel culture where the guy's always at fault, no matter what. Well, yeah, that happens in the you, court system a lot yeah. too. You'll see. The guy's always at fault. It doesn't matter if the guy was getting abused. As soon as you hit a woman, you're in, you're wrong. No, equal rights, equal fights. <laughs> no, it's well, that's yeah, like, even, hey, I'm all for that. Even like, with it, child custody, um, yeah, the court is always much. in the mother's favor. Even yeah. if the mother's a drug addict and the guy's like, yeah, upstanding, it's oh, the, they they need their mom. Well, they. They need a good parent. They, it's not just. I think it comes that. down to a lot of judges are also female. No, like, it, I, it boils down to the, you need your mom. Like you need the person that carried you. Like that. That's what it boils down to. Their opinion. I don't know about all that. I'm at. I live with both my parents. My parents are split, and I did whatever I wanted at my mom's house, and um, my dad was too strict. So I was like, I don't know. I. I also live with my grandma in that period, and I think I probably did the best while I was with my grandma. So if anything, people need their grandparents, probably. <laughs> but you were a woman. Yeah, but I wasn't just a woman. Like, my grandfather was there, too, until he passed. So. But getting back to the thing, like, the the problem with accusing, with was trying to, the problem with, punishing women for uh, for saying something even if they're wrong is the fact that th so many women don't say anything even though something did happen that that's why that i think that our culture in general doesn't feel comfortable like canceling a woman even though they lied about it well that's like so allegedly there is this girl named Justine Paradise that I used to watch on TikTok a lot. She came out with a thing right before Jake Paul's last fight, but it was mm -hmm. only during his like right before his fight week where he apparently allegedly sexually assaulted her. Yet after the fight, I have not heard like one single thing from it. What's so, I told like, What? I told you that I didn't think it was real because it came out right by the fight, which was very wrong of me not to, like, I am very much believe the victim, but it just seems sketch. See, here's my whole thoughts on believing the victim, because then we come back to the Jack thing and Sienna. I will believe the victim until about, until, I don't really want to put, like, a time frame on it, but, like, if you go multiple months without saying anything about the situation after it's already aired and the other person's defended themselves, then I no longer have it like I don't feel I have to believe the victim anymore, you know? Yeah. Well that's the other thing too is like they'll they'll say all oh, the lawyers told you to be quiet. Well your old lawyers only told you to be quiet because there's some falsehood in your story. Yeah. Like there's there's ways that the that they can disprove your story. Yeah, like, if you're being completely honest and open with the internet, because everyone matter. knows if you're, if you're lying, people notice, because people pick apart those videos. So. But it wouldn't matter if they were lying or not, because, if, or if they were telling the truth, because, you know. See, like... a lot of people don't realize that, like, if you are falsely accused of things, though, you can counter sue for defamation of character. 
but a lot of people just don't do it, which if more people did it, I think it wouldn't happen quite as much. Like if someone tries to say that I did things with them that I didn't do, and I know for a fact I didn't do, and I can put my hand on the Bible or lie detector test, whatever you need me to do, and I know I'm 100% telling the truth, I'm going to counter sue the fuck out of you for defamation of character because that can ruin your career. It can ruin this. Like, like that's just how I feel about the situation. I don't know. So, do you think that women should be a woman should be punished for making false ac- like in general? Like, do you think people that make false accusations should be punished? I think anyone that makes a false accusation should be punished. Either way, sexual assault is not something that should be taken lightly. So, either way, they should get punished for it. Well, because if a guy's found guilty, he goes to jail for however long, and in my opinion, not long enough. But if the yeah. guy's found innocent, then nothing really happens to like what he had to go through, or or girl, like female or male, like if, yeah. A lot of times you still lose your job and shit like that. If you're you lose your job, of that. you lose your job. You lose like you might lose a family. You know, you might what, whatever happens. Complete you know, credibility, yeah. Yeah, uh, complete credibility, like with everything, like whether it's a celebrity or non celebrity. Like you might lose your standing amongst like your peers in your in your neighborhood and all that stuff. And you gotta live with that. So like what what's the price? Like what price do you place on that? If you're found imagine, imagine being one of the people that are found guilty but know for a fact like you didn't do it. And now you're walking around your neighborhood having to tell people you're a sexual predator embarrassing yourself every day. When... Yeah, was... In my opinion, it's very few people that get found guilty of a sex crime that didn't actually do it. Well, this is like, I'm talking about like back in the day, it was more of a he said, she said, not proof. Like now they seem to like check things out a lot more thoroughly, but like they used to just throw people away for it for not even and not even like check if the statements had it up. That's part of the reason why they're not in jail long enough is because they couldn't prove it. So now like laws were written for the he said, she said scenario. And it was, it was pretty much. Here's what happened. You guys decide. Here's six months. But you so have now, the you also have the case where a lot more people are doing it, but they are not, you know, since mm-hmm. there's lack of proof in the situation, they're not being found guilty. But I'm mainly talking about the ones that are like, you know, that are getting talked to about this or getting in trouble for this that actually didn't do it. Yes. Hold on. So back to cancel culture. Are we gonna cover like the fact that we've canceled American history, or I mean, we can get into that. I was just about to. My next question was, uh, if it's toxic or not. Most definitely. Most certainly. Yeah, no matter I what think... kind of cancel culture it is, it's most definitely toxic. Yeah, that's what I said. I, no matter what, I don't think cancel culture is helpful at all. It's not. Like if I you have re- if you have a real problem and you know there's real proof out there, then. All their local police station in that area. That's the way I look at it. Like, if oh. you're gonna try to tear someone down online, what's the point? Because you know, what? if they're not guilty, you look like a douchebag. And if they are guilty, then you probably didn't do shit in the first place. You know what cancel culture is? It's ignorance. That's all it is. It's just straight up ignorance. Mm-hmm. And like, it's just like a wave and a momentum of, like I said, of a bunch of like mainly sixteen through like. 12 or 16 year olds that don't know what the real life is like yet. Well, and it's not just 12 to 16 year olds. I mean, it's, it's, it's Gen Z in general. It's, it's the college students coming into college and being taught all these things. And then once a person goes sideways, like in their, for that goes against their opinions. Once a person makes a decision, uh, JK Rowling is a perfect example of this. She, uh, so, Without like, and they like, cancel her due to yeah, due to her statements about how like, unless you're biologically able to have like bi- being able to biologically have sex with someone is how you uh, are able to determine whether or not you're what gender role you are, and people decided to cancel her because she felt a certain way. Well, they they also tried to cancel her for apparently not writing the Harry Potter series or something like that. Oh, she wrote the Harry Potter series. They I, I just remember that being like a thing like four years ago, everyone trying to cancel her because 
nobody had any proof of this. They just randomly, someone tweeted it out. They're like, she didn't write the Harry Potter series. And then everyone went after her. <laughs> so, but she, yeah. It's also yeah. a different, like, the problem with how even my generation and the generation below, you're not going to get these 40, like 30 year olds to 60 year olds to change their minds on subjects. There's no point in arguing. Like you can tell them why you think it is wrong, but at the end of the day, they're not going to change their mind. What you need to do is change your peers' minds because we're still upbringing. Our brain's still like developing. Like that is the best way to do it. There's no getting on someone because they said something 20 years ago on Twitter when, you know, they were a kid. That's not going to help because they were growing up. So like now that like they're 30 or something like that, what what good are you doing? Because they already learned. Like, <laughs> well, the other thing is, is like you're never gonna like. Uh, you guys believe it should even be a thing? Hell no. Yeah, I don't. Hell no, because it's 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 you're you're saying that you're gonna cancel like so. For example, Ameri- like I'll I'll bring up American history because it's the it's one of the biggest ones over the past two years. And for me, that's like what made me start paying attention to cancel culture. It's you're creating a bunch of arrogant people. Like you have arrogant people making like claims that aren't true. You know, and and even if like in in deciding, oh, we, his, they're deciding we, history because with cancel culture. Oh yeah, we try to cover up so much shit that like the more we cover it up, the more likely it is to rehappen. Like yep. The Pledge of the Allegiance, people don't even realize it has like six more verses just about racism and like bringing slaves back to their masters if they get away and shit like that. But they like cut that shit completely out and like buried it. Exactly. But you have anything, and... SmackDown? Oh, uh, no. I already said whatever I was going to say on that part. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, it is what it is. I, I, well, fuck, even look at shit. We're gamers, so let's go on a gaming topic for a second. Look at Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. They, any World War Two game that we have had since World at War, or maybe even before World at War, I don't no, remember. World at War was actually accurate. So here's the thing: yes. World at War was accurate. But like World Ever War Two, the War one that II... recently came out, they didn't even use like Nazis signals and scared of like hurting people's feelings i'm like why are you scared to hurt people's feelings about things that already happened well because they it's not that they were scared to hurt people's feelings it's just the beginning of it was like a beginning of cancel culture yeah like you know? it, it oh it's it happened, not okay though. to have a, a historically accurate like symbol in a historically placed game that's not okay like it, yeah, it like, just doesn't make sense. The things that people cancel on top of saying, other people. Like I don't know, it's it's so dumb. Like so, so I believe dumb. certain things are. Uh, I'm gonna get on a weird topic, but the rebel flag. Uh, oh, that's not ig- a weird topic at all. It's more ignorant than anything. Like people well, the, the... use it as a racist signal. So it it's like okay it is canceled because like it's racist and I mean it is a racist symbol at least in my the way I look at things but it's also a part of history so like we can't ignore it and so what's what's your take on that so uh, I, I, I I'm sorry no my bad um I was just gonna say coming from the south itself. Uh, you still got the ignorant people who like to, uh, you know, still fly and whatever, and shit like that. See, the and way in reality, I, but... it was just a, it was just a fucking flag for Mississippi, or for like the South in general, but mostly Mississippi. The funniest... They just recently got rid of that flag. Yeah, the funniest thing is that's not even like the South's actual flag. Like that's just their battle flag. But the fucked up part is, I'm from the north, like, Pennsylvania, like, Gettysburg. Like, and there's people that are just flying the flag. But, no offense, but if you're flying that shit, like, near me or something like that, I don't really, 
I don't think of you as like a historian because I know you have hidden beliefs behind it, shit like that. What I think is that you're a fucking loser because you're flying a losing flag. The South lost. Get the fuck over it. You're a fucking loser. That's just the way I look at it. Like, you know, well, it to is. To be fair, all of the people around here that fly the Confederate flag are racist. Are racist. Are racist. Like, they, like, people that fly the Confederate flag in my town are racist. Like, hard are everything. So I love you guys. I live in yeah. Tennessee. Yeah. So I live in the heart of this. Like, I, my best friend, like, very conservative, very, like I, like I said, most of my friends are conservative before. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not racist whatsoever. Gotcha. I disagree with what the, what the North thinks the rebel flag stands for. Okay. And I've lived, I've lived all over. I've lived in Colorado. I've lived, I've lived all over. Um, there's, there's actually, there was a lot of African Americans that did fight under that flag. And like, it was it was mythological. It was it was it was it was it was the North saying, like literally put it's like this was again another form of almost early like early, cent like nineteenth century cancel culture, almost it was, it was people putting an idea that a symbol meant something. So that way, it could cripple even more of like the self beliefs. But you also have the same people that do make that symbol mean what people associate it with. No, you have ignorant people making. You have the ignorant people making. Oh yeah, that, definitely making but, that symbol into something different. But like I said before, like, and the, and up north a, they are where racist. It's where you're at, yeah. Because if you're up north and you're flying a rebel flag, for one, what the fuck's the point? We weren't a part of the South, so we don't have that whole Southern heritage thing going for us. So I don't. <laughs> well, they don't deserve to be flying the flag. They shouldn't fly the flag to begin with if they don't know what it means. It it wasn't a racist symbol when it when it started. It it isn't if you're flying it down south. If they're flying it down south, most of the people flying it down here are not racist. I just you have your uh, you have your picks and yeah, at least pictures. here, I don't think. It should be even sold. Like in the north, I don't think it should be sold. I well, think it, it should be, be at museums, and I think that's about it. So I don't think it should be removed completely because, like I said, I'm not a fan of cancel culture, but it so shouldn't you... necessarily be removed completely. But I feel like in historical, like I'm one of the only places you can really buy a rebel flag around here actually is in Gettysburg. So like people only really sell them around here for like souvenirs, but. People will literally go out of their way just to put it on the back of their F two fifty. Yeah, so uh, and, and I've got it like my like I said, I have it in my house. It's it's not. I, I'm not. I've bought one too. I'm not like I said. I'm not saying anything. I've had one too, but I was like, at least growing up, I've always been like really intrigued by war and like stuff like that. So when I bought mine, I had it and I was like hung up in my room and shit like that, like next to the American flag and the Don't Tread Me flag. So, exactly. Um, I have my coworker, <clears throat> my coworker sitting next to me, and uh, he, I guess he has some words to say really about it. Okay. So, like I said, uh, keep an open mind on it as well. Um, he'll explain. All right, that's fine. I mean, I've lived in the South, and I'm from 20 minutes outside of Gettysburg. I see the different culture of the flag down here compared to up there yeah but i don't know if i take it as far as any person who has that flag is automatically racist i mean i have family in york pennsylvania who have that flag up because our family fought in the civil war and everything like that like our family died you know fighting for the south and that's just a big part of him i don't see that as like him being racist or whatever just you know anybody up north who has a Dixie flag, I don't think that's an automatic racial thing. No, and there is people... like a separation between having the flag for heritage reasons against having it to be racist. But at least well, like what I'm I live like I, I don't know, do I live technically upper Pennsylvania? I don't like, know, but like like middle. Yeah. So like when people do fly it, like not necessarily like outside and shit like that. I'm more talking about like 
people are driving around on it and like they're usually like younger kids that <laughs> their parents have taught them a certain way so they continue to do things a certain way like the people from newville which was what we were getting to like they're all racist little pricks that their parents taught them that like being racist is cool and when, that's when we were growing up there was about there was maybe two black kids in our entire school and they would usually get fucking picked on all the time yeah but I eventually, at least myself, I was kicked out of public school. I got sent to a school where there was a lot more mixed race and stuff like that. So I, my mind definitely changed as my like upbringing came. And uh, uh, I think that uh, you can't just see the see like for for the flag, you can't just see it and no strangers believe because that makes us just yeah. as ignorant as they are. If even if if they're racist, if they're not, then that just makes us ignorant. So what do you guys think about like the like knocking down of historical shit? Because I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Well, again, um, it goes back to: Are you gonna re- like no. that? Those stuff are reminders, so we don't repeat the same mistakes. Never That's major historical significance. Yeah, I, I definitely, I don't believe in knocking this stuff down and going places and chopping heads off statues and shit. Like that shit's crazy. Like, like I think I had somebody the other day. I was, I was having this argument with them, and. They were like, oh, well, I agree with, like, the generally statues being taken down and all this stuff. I was like, dude, so you, you, you believe, so I said, do you like the government? They were like, no. I said, so, so what <sighs> happens if we were to fight and lose against the government, but then they made a statue because we were important? You think they should knock us down, too? Like, that's what they're saying. Uh, yeah, like I said, I don't, I like historical accuracy and stuff like that, so I like the yeah. You know, I don't. I don't agree with it at all. I also don't really agree with burning like any flag, so that shouldn't be a thing. Nope. But like, also coming from a different standpoint, eventually, like slavery and all that kind of stuff is just going to become like a part in a textbook where it doesn't really get talked about anymore. And like well, what are... we're going through now is going to be the main stuff that people read about. Yeah, there's more people that like not that are saying like, I agree with like tearing everything down, but like just a different side of it. Like, just think, kids that are growing up now are more likely to learn about the coronavirus and racism and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know people that don't even know what 9/11 is, so it's which is yeah, that's crazy. Like people like, that are like, we grew up in high school. You watched a video on that every year. How old are you guys? I'm 21. I'm 23, going on 24. I'm 23, uh, and my coworker's 27. So I'm so. 29. I was in fifth grade, and I remember that shit. Like, legit, I was, like, I was, I was a couple months I was, before. I was actually going to preschool. Was, my dad was driving me to daycare. I was third grade in Rugby Mead Elementary in Westminster, Maryland, and that was a wild music class. But how long before it gets canceled? Honestly, with everything else, it's gonna get canceled, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I give because, it a couple more years. I can get into some alleged shit with nine eleven because I personally think it was an inside job. Well, yeah, the way they set it up, <laughs> I do too. But uh, oh, okay. So my next, I got next question since we're like all on these topics and shit like that. Do you think the world's too soft? Because oh, yeah. I, I feel like you can't yeah. even make a joke anymore. Without, I mean, in in German schools, World War Two is already taught differently, uh, and has been for years. It's actually portrayed about Hitler being there, and uh, and some of the some of the stuff. But that was done, uh, some of the stuff that was done. But one of the main focuses is how America just evaded them. Yeah. So I mean, like, the world is soft. Like the world, the world likes to see things. The world wants to see it, so it doesn't matter. I've got a question. Yeah. Anyway, don't worry about that. I mean, I do know. It's definitely soft. You can't say one thing without it being taken out of context or something. I mean, Marshmallow Generation is the start of cancel culture. Gen Z just sucks. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to hold it back. Gen Z, you fucking suck. <laughs> and and they I don't do. work. Yeah. I'll ruin everything. 
Like I'm, uh, you can, if you, if you guys still talk the game, you can even, and it's rubbed off. I think, I think a lot of like, you see a lot of how Gen, why Gen Z is the way it is by looking at their parents. Cause a well, lot of the older people are lazy. Well, if you look at like boomers and shit like that, bro, they'd be like, they think millennials are like the end of the earth. Fuck dude. We're not even close to Gen Z. <laughs> No, Jen's like I told one person I worked with a couple years ago. He was like eighteen. I said, "Look, you're a hard ass worker. I commend you." I said, "But if I have to see another eighteen year old step through, because I was a manager at this point, I said, if I have to see another eighteen year old put in an application and step through my establishment, I'm probably gonna smack the shit out of them the next time they 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 say something or don't do something." And you have some that are like decent. So, but... but those are the people that were raised by their grandparents. No a mind. lot, a lot of them. It seems like I don't know. They're just have no work ethic. They call off a lot. They're never. You can never count on them to be on time. Okay, so, we're getting a little bit personal here. Yeah, at Kayla. Technically, aren't you Gen Z? I'm a good worker. I just can't wake up for the life of me. What? So you Actually, I think I'm technically considered Gen Z, but on the low end. I gotta look that up. We're like, I feel like <clears throat> we're at like the very end of millennials. So the newest generation is 97 through 2012. So we're technically Gen myself. Z, but I, I count myself I, more on the millennial side. Yeah. Well, yeah, who would want to be a part of Gen Z? I wouldn't. Fair enough. There are people my age that are just as much as pussies. Like, a lot of the people that I know and a lot of my friends, I'm I'm just gonna fucking say it. A lot of them are bums. Like they don't they don't want to go to work. When they do work, they can't hold a job more than a month. And I that's just the way it is. Like I have a friend. It's a and... lot of people in chaos too. Like that. <laughs> uh, no offense to them, but a lot of them still live at home. A lot of them don't work, and they don't know what real bills are. They have one car payment or one insurance payment, and they think they're, you know, they don't know what real life is. A friend, and I hate to do this, so I'm not going to mention any names, but um, he uh, he had roommates that for a while weren't working, and he wasn't charging a lot. It was like $150 a month. It was stuff you could do if that if you had a car, you'll you would be able to like make 150 dollars with DoorDash. Yeah. Um you know, so it's like but they wouldn't work for like three or four months they just wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't understand how people don't work. Like there's times where I'm like fuck dude I could just like quit my job and take a month off because I have like a certain amount of money built up. But if I honestly did that, I would get to, like, the second week in, and I would go fucking nuts. Like, I wouldn't know what to do. Like, so, when I was quarantined with COVID, me and Kayla argued all the time because I didn't want to fucking be here. Like, I would have rather been anywhere but here. I've been working since I was 14. Other than my couple of years there where I had to, or my seven months, eight months, where I struggled with addiction. I've been working since I was 18. Or 14, sorry, 14 in a kitchen in some capacity, and then 18 through college. It, that's around when I started. I think I was 15, and I started with my uncle's uh, lawn mowing business, like his landscaping business. And then I that's think I worked there on and off until I was 18, because I didn't want to work any, like, stupid, like, minimum wage jobs and shit like that when I was in school, because there was no point. Like my first job was pushing carts at Giant for ten dollars an hour, which is a lot better than seven twenty five. My first job was this conference ground, and I was making, I would I would be up at five and be asleep at eleven. I did the math, and I was making maybe two dollars an hour. See, when I was I was in my senior year of high school, uh, me and my principal were talking about it because I thought about doing like a part time thing. So basically what would have happened is I would have, since I was working, they would do this thing where they gave me credits because I was working, which I, I don't know why it never happened, mainly because I didn't want, I ended up like getting cold feet about it. But what was going to happen was I was supposed to work from like 
12 a.m. to 8 a.m. and then go to school till 12 p.m. and then I'd have off to sleep and stuff like that. So basically, I would work for eight hour, like eight hour shifts since I was I was the oldest person at River Rock went in my senior year. So I was 18 before everybody else was. So I was allowed to like work eight hour shifts and stuff like that while everyone else could work like four. So I was going to work overnight and then come into school for four hours and then go home. But yeah. Ugh. I don't know. This generation, like, I think, I still think, like, unless you had, like, your grandparents or somebody older than your parents raising you, you're going to suck. Like, you're, you're just, that's just who it is. You're not going to, like, because a lot of parents are kids raising kids. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But the weird thing is, some younger people do good, though, because I I don't know how everyone's relationship with their parents are, but my parents weren't exactly, like, parental enough. Like I said, my mom was way too loose. My dad was way too strict. So I basically, my, I don't know, I, uh, what the fuck? I, I know, I'm trying to think of, like, a way to word this. I basically became, like, the dad to my little brother. Like when my, my dad was always off like chasing girls and my mom was always, you know, doing her own thing. So when my, when I turned 21 or something like that, I moved back home from, from, I was living like an hour and a half away and I took over all my dad's bills at his house and he moved out with his girlfriend, but my brother continued to live with me. And honestly, if it wasn't, my brother's like 16 or 17. He lived with me until I moved out, what, last year, Kayla, or the year before? The year before. Yeah. Last year. So he was living with me for a good three years, and I honestly could say if it wasn't for me getting on his ass, he'd probably still be working at the minimum wage job he was working when, like, I came home. And now he makes, like, way more money than me. So, like, <laughs> some people can, like, teach others. But yeah, it is but, a bunch of kids having kids. Like, I, I was, like, I just hope that somebody comes along. Like, it has, like, like you said, you were raised by your grandparents. You said that was the best. Yeah. The, the best parenting figure you had. The best yeah, parenting I, figure I had with my grandmother, my aunt, and, like, like, those people. Like, the older people, the people that, like, did everything already. Twice. Like, like I can't lie and say my parents didn't do shit for me. Because that's just not true. But. You can real real life <laughs> advice, real life advice, and real life like shit. I was taught by my grandparents. Oh hell yeah! And like, like they actually they actually told you how it is. Like parents are like, oh, like we have a bunch of bills today and we don't have money. It's not like, like the parents, your parents just made it sound like you were broke all the time. You know, like the grandparents just said, hey, like life is a fucky road and you're gonna be. a going down a fucky path and it's okay yeah i'm glad i wasn't like spoiled though either because that's where a lot of you know being soft comes from being spoiled i uh, i'm a i'm a intervene real quick uh i'm gonna go ahead and hop off for the night my, right, phone, uh, I'm say my phone battery but uh, i appreciate you having me on the, the podcast of course uh, smacky yeah all right buddy we'll talk to all you right. later all right good night good night all right so I only have like really like one final question on the whole matter of cancel culture, but uh, why do you think people like people let others who are like just sitting behind a screen control their whole life? Because like, I I couldn't imagine it. Like I'm I'm not scared to get canceled. I'm more scared to get sued, which is why I say allegedly canceled. Do whatever you gotta do. It's not a good fuck. But I don't know. I'm not gonna let someone that's a huge keyboard warrior tell me how I should be living my life. I think the way I look at it. Because, oh, I think it's mainly because most of these upcoming people are teenagers and they're really young and their following is like what makes them famous. Well, like, you know, to add on to that. They're following. To add on to that real quick, you know who has honestly done the very best with cancel culture out of every single person on the platform, I feel? Who? Oh. Charlie D'Amelio. She just does not give a single fuck. And I, that's what you have to do. She goes on live, she cries, and then... It's yeah, I mean, I, 
Yeah. But she doesn't, like... I see a lot of these people that, like, do get, like, hate comments and shit like that responding and shit like that and and just making it worse for themselves. She she does her thing, whatever, then it it's over with. I mean, she's also one of the most followed, like, TikTokers, so... Yeah, there's not a certain when you're like a hundred million subscribers. If I say the wrong thing and I try to get canceled and I lose like five million subscribers, guess what? I still have ninety five million subscribers. I don't give a shit. <laughs> With her, the thing is, she was getting canceled over going on vacation and shit. It wasn't yeah, even yeah, like that was the biggest bullshit thing. Like people were so scared of COVID and everything like that. Which COVID is real, definitely real. Hurts your lungs. I've had it. But, like, um, if I had a chance to go to Hawaii during COVID, I would get my fuck shot. Yeah, but like, fuck you. Think I care that you guys don't want me to go on vacation? Fuck y'all. I would do what I want. Did you pay for my vacation? Sure. <laughs> if I'm an influencer and you pay for my vacation, like, if I start, oh, I guess they could say because it's her videos and they watch them that they pay her, but technically it's her creation. So, but like, if I created, like, a fucking... What's those things that people create for money? GoFundMe's? Like, if I yeah. create a GoFundMe and you guys all donated, and I'd let you tell me how to spend my money then, because it's your money. But, like, if I'm making my own money and making my own choices, I'm going to do what the fuck I want. I don't care what you guys have to say about it. Well, well here's the thing. If... Sorry, go ahead. Like, with her, like, with the vacation thing, I guess, like, it's like, you work a nine to five job and you're not famous, you're going on vacation. Yeah, you're right. famous. The stress on you is even higher because you have to maintain this image. If I can get away and go on vacation and actually be me because I might have changed in the past two years because, you know, that's who I am, but I have to pretend to be somebody I'm not. I, I'd love a vacation from that. Like, fuck that. Like, I, I totally understand it. And that's the thing. Like, just because someone posts one video where they're on a beach without a mask or something like that doesn't mean they're spending their whole fucking time getting next to people coughing on them and spitting on them. Like, who the fuck? You know what? Who thinks like that? Like, just because, hey, fuck, I went to New York peak, like, COVID. Like, me and Kayla went to New York because it was my birthday. It was January. And, uh, I wore my mask the whole time. But we, uh, when we took pictures and stuff like that, we took our mask off. And you, Kayla had to literally post on there because she knew her friends were going to act all stupid about it. That, don't worry, guys, we only took our mask off because we were getting pictures done. Like, fuck that. Comment why your do dumb you shit. To... I'll delete you. Like, I don't care. Why do you have to tell people? Exactly. Like... Why? There, there's this, no this... point. It's not your life. This goes back to like a lot of my friends. Like I got the vaccine. I'm conservative, but now I'm a communist. Like, like oh yeah, I'm a, like, I'm a Republican, but I got the vaccine, and I had like, my grandmother like, "What the fuck's wrong with you?" <laughs> like it's it just goes it just it's this is further cancel culture. Like now now we get canceled like within our own families because we got something that could help us. You know, and... it's the crazy thing about the whole vaccine thing. The main people that don't want to do it are because they're, quote-unquote, conservative Trump supporters. But it's like they don't realize that Trump was endorsing you guys to get the vaccine, too. So what the fuck? And <laughs> Trump got Moderna. Like, he got the vaccine. Yeah, and like... He, he went on Fox. And there was a Forbes article, and I, there was a legit, like, Fox News, like, video with it. And he was asked, are the vaccines sa safe? He says, yes. He says, so how is it... So how's said, everyone making it so political? Because literally... Both people that were running for president supported getting the vaccine, so I don't understand why there are... So this I mean, I get it's your to... choice, but... I'm not, gonna lie. Back... Hmm? I'm not gonna lie. I don't want to get the vaccine because I just don't trust it. I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not a Biden supporter. I don't care about politics, but I don't even get the flu shot because I don't trust that shit. The so main I thing that people are worried about is that they're going to be tracked, but they're the same people that are holding their phones in their hand the whole time. Oh, no, I don't give a shit about that. I just don't like. Like, I can't if I get the flu shot, I'm going to get the flu that year. But this year I haven't got the flu shot. I haven't been sick. And it's normally around the time where I would get sick because I get the flu shot. 
the, the whole reason that I got the COVID shot is to counter react any long term symptoms that I might have had. Like, you don't know, like my lungs being all messed up from COVID. Say I didn't get the COVID shot and it wasn't, and it didn't like fight some of that off. Maybe I develop lung cancer or something. I so mean, like, I'm just, I'm that... just trying to counter react whatever might happen. So uh... that could happen anyway. There's a chance. Anything... Oh no! Yeah, of course. Here's the reason why I got the COVID shot. I think it's going to be the only way to work in the next three years. I think, um, and I'm not young. I'm not old enough to retire. I don't have. I don't even have four hundred one k yet. So, I'm not. I'm not old enough to retire. I wouldn't have the money to retire. It's going to be that thing. I think. Like, and people will fight it, but it won't. It won't succeed because they they've already said that jobs have the right to make that decision because colleges do. So why not give, like, workplaces that, too? Well, shit, that's like, going back to the whole politics part of it, literally, Kayla's parents won't get it because they don't support Biden. That's basically their whole outlook on it. Here's I'm like, thing. what the fuck? Trump was literally telling you guys to get it, too. But you're going to support Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris is about to be a president when he resigns because he pulled out our troops out of Afghanistan. Sorry, and not to make this political, but again, like, and it's going to go, nobody's going to, Nobody's gonna let him take the blame for it. It's just me. The cancel culture and media like go to hand in hand. So it's like, see, I don't think we should have been wasting our time in Afghanistan, anyways. Me but, neither. But, but pulling them all out at once was a mistake. Yeah, that is. But they're not gonna blame Biden for it. Sorry, and I'm and not to make this political and and or anything like that. They're not gonna blame Biden for it. That they're gonna find some way to blame Trump for it because. There, people are asking for his resignation. So I was talking the other day to my one coworker about the whole political Trump and Biden thing, and uh, here's the way that I look at it. All right, Trump was a pretty decent president, but he lacked as a human in some ways. But he all he did a lot of good shit for other countries, but neglected this one. That's my whole stand on Trump. I think um, he did so much for other countries, which I is a great thing, like making peace with North Korea, everything yeah. with Russia and shit like that. That was all awesome. But what what was happening here? Riots, uh, fucking the world basically burning, like catching its catching on fire, and that's just... because Trump. Okay, so that's because Trump had Trump could not. You don't control the people. The government's job is not to control the people. It's to make sure our country is like is becoming better, and it was. What? Uh, it, it there? It's. Do you want the government controlling your life? I don't give a shit, honestly, because it's going to happen either way. But, <laughs> so. but but the way Trump was running America was so the government wasn't up our asses about everything. I mean, that's like anything can be argued when it comes to politics. Like I don't believe there should be taxes on my overtime money, but it it's just shit that you'll never win. So at so, the end of the day, I'm not in politics. I don't pay enough attention to politics, but what I do when I do see things, like I will give credit for them or I won't. But like since uh since like I said, they both kind of counter react each other in a way. Like Trump did very good things off seas and stuff like that. But when it was here, there was like everything seemed like it was just going to shit at once. That's because local local governments didn't do anything. They wouldn't they wouldn't do anything. Oh no, because they're scared. They're all scared. They're all politicians. They're all pussies. So but... so you're saying so you're saying that the federal government should take care of the states when that's not how go the government's supposed to work. No, I'm just saying that they shouldn't. That's, have that's why Trump. That's why Trump things didn't on. Do anything. I no, I. It's not that he wasn't doing anything. It's the shit that he was edging on by his dumbass tweets and shit like that. Like. It's not necessarily he had to go out there and put out the fires and shit like that, but he didn't need to start more. Is the way I look at it. And you can't blame the like. Okay, so when Trump said, and this is again, like I think, I think this ties hand in hand with cancel culture because of the fact that. Oh yeah, Trump's definitely canceled. <laughs> well, no, he's not. He's going to be back in twenty twenty four. He's only canceled for four years. Well, not like that. I meant he was definitely canceled the whole time he was president. Um, but yeah, the whole entire time he was president, the media canceled him. It was the media. It wasn't just some twelve to sixteen year old girls. It was, it was 
50 year old adults canceling him because they didn't agree with his agenda thing though and, you uh, had you had three or four news channels that were trying to cancel trump but on top of that you had about 30 or 40 news channels that were on his side yeah. name 30 or 40 news channels that were on his side I, anything like a lot of local news is definitely but fox is a huge one well, See, the yeah. main ones that I think of, I don't really know news channels that much. When I think of news channels, I think ABC 27 and Fox and uh, CNN. That's the only news channels I can really think of. And it's, it's each one is just its own. Like, Fox is always going to be a Republican and CNN's always going to be Democrat. So there's always going to be bad things and good things and bad things. So I can't get into the whole news things because I just don't watch the news. NPR is the, so, so my thing is news is supposed to be biased or unbiased, and just give you straight facts and let you make your own decision. That's what the news is supposed to do. Yeah. NPR is perfect for that. What's that? Uh, National Public Radio. Gotcha. Um, you know, stuff like that. And I don't watch the news for a sheer fact. My When I would watch it when I was a kid, it was because that's, like, a thing your grandparents do at, like, 7 a.m. when you get ready to go to school. And that shit just made, school. It just made me depressed. Like, it just made me sad. So when you come home from school, they're all watching Passions or Days with Our Lives or... Yeah, so I don't... I just... My grandma always watched Reba, but that's what's... That's <laughs> what. But the news just makes me depressed. That's why I don't watch it. And half the time that I, when I see news and shit like that, it's because I'm fucking Twitter spamming me or something. Then I'll go and check out what's going on. And then... So here's but... how vivid cancel culture was. Just during the election. So there was a debate where... Uh, Trump goes, we're going to have the vaccine before I leave office. And this is, I remember this clearly. And Biden's I just watch like, this one. Biden's like, no, we're not. Mm-mm, no, no, we're not. And that's, that's literally what he said. He just said, no, we're not going to have it. To be fair, before he was Trump. right. <laughs> well, no, we, fa- no he, we did have the vaccine before Trump left office. Trump left but office. It wasn't, and, it wasn't like you it couldn't wasn't, get it. We're, we couldn't get it. Us working class couldn't get it. It it was hard to get it, but it was it was starting to circulate. And like anything that's like that, with how quick it came out, it was being given to the people that it needed to first. But it was still out. It was still there. I'm not necessarily taking up for Biden either, because uh, right. he's also he's not great at all. And I pay oh. way too much for gas. So <laughs> Pre- prepare for Camel Harris. It's happening, guys. Yeah, but um. I'm gonna cancel her. Well, if we're gonna if we're gonna not agree with cancel culture, I'm gonna cancel her though. But I just I don't know. Like I said, I don't really pay attention to politics too much because if anything, it just divides us more. But I'm usually like Republican, so I usually go on that side. I wouldn't say I'm completely conservative. I'm more neutral. And I hate Trump, so there's that. Like I don't like him, but I think he did everything he said he was going to do, even if I hated what he said he was gonna do. And to me, that makes him a better candidate for a president than anybody else. Yeah, I just didn't like him as a person. And then there was a bunch of stuff that came out with him and Jeffrey Epstein. And I was like, no, this shit, this shit's too much. Oh, okay. So how much, how much of Jeffrey Epstein do you think is just people trying to cancel other people? Because have you seen the actual proof that he was there? Do you know the group uh, Anonymous on like? You know, the yeah, but again, group. I don't necessarily believe everything they they put out either. They put out a lot of fucking like documentations that are like signed and shit though, and pictures and yeah, there, there I, was a lot of shit that it's it's hard to deny. Anonymous has turned into a a whole entire agenda upon itself, and like they they are they have become selfish. They're not what they they stand for anymore. So I don't necessarily agree with them. Yeah. But I, you know, at the same so, time, you might not agree, but I can't ignore kind of anonymous. Thing. Anon- anonymous to me is like the the Internet Illuminati. Oh, you definitely. Know? But so it's, sometimes so it's like, you got sometimes you got to trust the Illuminati. <laughs> uh, then you might as well trust every other president, but Trump. Uh, like we can that, all join him. We're all part of the Illuminati in some sort of way. We're all Jesus, connected. I wish. <laughs> I wish I'd be part of the one percent. Yeah. Bill Gates better start sharing his money. Shit. But all right, that's really all I have time for tonight. I got to 
get off here oh, and yeah. save this recording and then By i started way, game... i started saving uh using just craig instead of Streamlabs because our voice comes through much clearer so what i have to do now is i have to save it to an mp4 and then pull up Streamlabs, hit record and then play the mp4 and then at the end of the video stop it <laughs> By the way, so, game says he'll buy. Uh, t- go uh, make a GoFundMe, and he'll uh, and all you can buy is packs of condiments, and he'll fund you. Me. Yep. All right, that'll work. So many packs of ketchup, he will hate me. I love ketchup. So you love ketchup? Yeah, ketchup's great. You Are we about to argue about if ketchup's good? What do I put gonna... ketchup on? I put ketchup on everything. I, I that's don't... not exactly true. I'm not weird. I don't put it on like mac and cheese and shit. That's weird. No, that's your taste bomb. Don't lie. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Um, nice. next week will be our final episode. So just stay tuned for that. See ya. Gonna... See ya. See ya.